I would like to welcome to the stage now uh, Dr. Colleen Walker from the University of Maine. Good morning. It's, it's really wonderful to be here. Um, and I'm really pleased to stand before you today and talk to you about a little place that we call Nanosilos Nano Valley um, in the state of Maine. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But we are working in Nanocellulose Valley to enable today's forest to bring uh, solutions for tomorrow's sustainable products. I think most of you are probably pretty darn well aware of the products that we use today that come from forests. Things like paper for writing, packaging, we all used a lot more of that, didn't we, during COVID? As well as lumber, things that we use to build homes. Um, and one of those forest products is nanocellulose. I'm not gonna bother to ask hands, raise hands, for people that are familiar with this term, but I thought it'd be trendy and I'd ask Chat GPT to explain it for us. So you can read along with me and I'll, I'll tell you how Chat GPT did when I'm done. So first, nanocellulose, uh, figure out where I have to read, is a material made from tiny particles of cellulose, which are the main components in cell walls. Okay, we get that. Uh, these particles are so small that you need a microscope to see them. Uh, nanocellulose is strong and lightweight and can be used to make things like paper, textiles, and even some kinds of plastics. And it's environmentally friendly, of course, because it's coming from uh, plants. And it can be, uh, it's a renewable resource and can be recycled. So uh, I think ChatGPT did a pre pretty good job. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of understanding what nanocellulose is. But before I tell you a little bit more about that, I want to tell you about Maine. I'm not sure if any of you know where the state of Maine is in the US. But if you think of the word Maine, you might think of lobsters. If you like to hike or ski, you may think of L.L. Bean. But I'll probably tell you something that you don't know about Maine, but it's the most densely forested states in the United States, with 89% of our land being covered by forests. Um, you can see by the picture, and then you can see in the red where the state of Maine is, if you're not familiar with, with where it is um, in the United States. Because of our forests, we have over uh, 16.3 million acres, which is about 6.5 million hectares, of contiguous pri privately owned working forest. These forests can deliver um, over 13 million tons of wood every year. And they have, we are, th as you can see from the map, we're very close to the, one of the largest consumer markets in the world in the Boston, New York area. And of course, I'm from the University of Maine. I'm very pleased to be here today representing the university. And we're in the state of Maine as long as with 20 other institutions of higher learning. Um, so Nanocellulose Valley to me is akin to, we all kind of are familiar with Silicon Valley where we saw the great growth of semiconductors. Nanocellulose is a hub for the people that have, can produce it. I'll talk a bit more about that next, as well as the scientists that have developed the research expertise on how to apply this material. And we also have the skilled workforce. If we, we have intergenerations that have been working in the forest, removing the wood from the forest and processing that material. So nanocellulose, um, how we make it, if you remember what ChatGPT said, it's already inherent in the plant cell walls, so we can make it from a variety of different sources. We can take uh, pulp that we use to make paper, we can use old corrugated containers, we can use wood chips, and we can e even use fibers like flax and hemp to make this material. Again, nature makes it, we just uh, work with it. Here I, you can see two of my students are putting dry lap into a pulper, we just slush it up into some um, water. Then we use mechanical refiners to process this material. Mechanical refiners can be found in any pulp and paper mill throughout the world, very common pieces of equipment. But we've developed a patented, pro and developed and patented a process to make this nanocellulose material. And it has some incredible applications. We're really exploiting the three properties of this material. It can act as a binder, it can act as a barrier, and it can act as a rheological modifier. But you can see by the list there, there's lots of applications from cement to pharmaceuticals, packaging, a whole host of those activities. One, it, and this is a commercial process. We've, as I mentioned, we patented this technology. It was licensed by Valmet. They're a global leader in pulp and paper manufacturing equipment, so they've licensed this technology. Valmet has uh, six installations uh, worldwide in Europe, the US, and Brazil, with four more coming online. Um, what Valmet uses this technology for to help paper companies really make an enhanced pulp. They can take a slipstream of their fiber material that they're already using to make paper, process it through these mechanical refiners, and then they produce their nanocellulose, add it back to make an enhanced pulp. But there's a lot more you can do with it besides that. Um, and also, just a side note that the Valmet has licensed this technology, but only for pulp and paper applications. So other opportunities for licensing exist. 
So a lot of the, some of these other unique applications, which really um, boggle my mind because we're taking forest fiber from the trees, and you can make it biocompatible to act as a substitute for bone. This is really amazing. I think we all know if you have written a piece of paper, and don't be shy, you might have done it when you were a kid, you know, chilling a piece of paper, it's very safe to eat. So it can be combined with um, different materials to become biocompatible. Um, this uh, can promote the growth of bone in the body. It's also very safe. It will de slowly uh, uh, dissolve in the body over time. And it uh, can be used for uh, the surgical bone structures or bone grafting. And this is truly amazing because that would, therefore, you reduce the number of surgeries and you don't have to put metal in the body. Really an incredible material. Another application is in uh, construction products. Here we can mix something as simple as wood flour with, nan with uh, nanocellulose. Here we're using the binder property of the material. Remember I told you it's a binder barrier or a re rheological modifier. Here we're using it as a binder. Mix wood flour with nanocellulose. Then you can use a process of just uh, pressure and heat. And you can make things like particle board, uh, fiber board, or flooring systems, all without the use of formaldehyde. So really tremendous material. Another application area is replacing plastic, something we're all keen on doing these days. And here we're going to be using, the, again, the barrier functionality of nanocellulose. Mm -hmm. uh, some companies are already out there doing it, maybe not necessarily in the barrier form, but some yes. Store Enzo has been using microfibrillated cellulose, a form of nanocellulose, in their products, as well as Tetra Pak. At the University of Maine, we do some research on, in paper packaging as well. You can see on the untreated side of paper is what a close-up of a paper surface looks like. On the left, uh, the right-hand side, the CNF treated side has a very, uh, um, what would you call it, light layer of nanocellulose on top. It's less than 10 grams per square meter on that sheet. But you can see how the sheet transitions from being rough to being smooth. It's almost equivalent to adding a piece of plastic on top of the sheet. You have increased gas barrier and um, increased grease barrier properties. Like, nanocellulose has some amazing grease barrier properties. I like to show this picture where you see a cup. This is just a cup made with um, brown or uh, recycled paper. And we've added onto a surface of the nanocellulose made from recycled or corrugated containers. The oil in that cup sat in there for six months without leaking through. And the experiment ended at six months because the researcher knocked the cup over. <laughs> But it's truly an amazing material in its grease barrier properties. I can't spend all my time talking about nanocellulose because I have to talk about the 3D printed home. I'm not sure if you saw this. It made a lot of social media hits uh, with the first bioprinted um, 3D home, 100% bio-based um, house. This was made at the Advanced Structures and Composite Center, which is at the University of Maine. They're also home to the uh, world's largest 3D printer another way that UMaine is trying to launch the bioeconomy and find different uses for wood. Oops, where do we go? Um, so I think hopefully I've given you a good idea about the resources that exist for Maine in Maine. We have, of course, our, our lovely sustainable forests. We have our skilled workforce. Uh, we have generations of families that have been living and, and working in the wood and forest products industry. And then we have the research expertise that's located at our universities and a lot of our companies throughout the state. But there's some other uh, resources for Maine that I think are truly marvelous. These are for companies that are interested in coming to Maine and investing in Maine. Com uh, organizations like Maine & Co. that offer free and confidential consulting services if you're interested in locating your business in the state. Invest in Maine helps you find other financial uh, programs to assist in, in gaining capital. And finally, Maine Technology Institute, which offers services to companies based in Maine to de accelerate and launch new products. Uh, with me uh, at the World Bar Max, I'm, I'm thrilled to have three of my fellow bio innovators with me. If you're interested in licensing, you can see James. If you're interested in 3D printing, you can see Susan. And if you're interested in the bioeconomy in Maine in general, you can talk to Bree. They're all, all here with me and at our, at our booth. So I thank you very much for your attention. I encourage you to look, visit that Nanocellulose Valley, our, our website, or better yet, come visit us in August. It's a great time to come to Maine, where we host a, an event every year to go over the wonderful things that we can do with nanocellulose. Thank you so much. Thank you.